Welcome to Round View at Kuni Kuni Ranch. My name is Emily Peterson. I wanted to come on here and let some of you know that this content here is going to, it's gonna be graphic for some of you. Um, it's gonna include some um, butchering processes here. So if that kind of content is going to offend you, I would suggest you go ahead and change the channel. Um, in this video, my husband Brett will be doing a demonstration of a scald and scrape roaster. Um, we utilize our Kuni Kuni hogs for all different sizes of meat and this one we will be using as a roaster in our oven. I think the most important thing with our scald and scrape is that we have the temperature between 150 and 155 degrees. Well, let's get right into this unedited video. The hair has time to cool back off. As you can see, it peels all the way to the first layer of that dermal layer, you know what that one's called? And that's what you're wanting? Yeah, oh, you okay. want to get it that that layer of skin and hair to peel just right off. Oh. And you're going to have, as you can see, you're going to still have some hairs that don't come out. Sure. And I'll show you the trick with that when we're done. Yeah, so far it's, it's peeled perfectly. And you'll always, there's always patches, little areas that don't like to release for some reason. It's usually in the pits, under, you know, the pit of the leg. Or... But yeah, this is what you want that layer of skin to just come right off with the hair with it. all the way to the feet. Yeah, yeah, all the way down to the hog or the trotter, I guess. Let me flip it and start on this side. Wow. Well, that you know, those things you, three months ago you wouldn't think you'd be doing. Right? <laughs> yeah. And you're like, well, I guess I'm doing it. That was, that, that's funny you say that because we had a cast three pigment, so that was me about two months ago. Yeah. Those things I thought I'd never do, I didn't want to do. And we just did two more, what, three days ago? Yeah. Um, it actually went well. The second time, it's one of those things where you live and learn and you get better at it. We definitely got better at it. We were out running around and looking healthy. It always amazes me after you're doing this film great process of how the skin is white. It is very interesting. I was wondering, I was like, uh oh, we got down to the meat, but obviously not. Wow, so interesting. Wow. Like you said, you know, it's, it's interesting what used to be like normal. Like, I'm sure like if we all went back to like our great grandparents. Yeah. It's pretty normal to like scald and like raised pigs or oh my great grandpa would grow out a couple of year you know and rabbits <laughs> and chickens he had two city lots yeah that's what i mean that's just what they did that's just kind of crazy like not that long ago no not that long ago at all wow, so you really have to like kind of be thoughtful of how much water you put down yeah i i <laughs> think i overdid it because i am right at the right at the top there so yeah do you want me to grab like a little bucket or something to take some of the water out or no nah, we'll be okay i'll just uh make sure i don't let them go so you all were from washington is that where you were born and raised or yep yeah he was in the kent area which is about oh. right you know where that is a little bit yeah okay and then i was the auburn um area so pretty close together nice yeah nice. And then you all stayed there, you said, for a while, and then went to Oregon? Yeah, we were in, in Oregon, what was it, 92 through 96? Yeah. 90. 93, maybe? I was down there for a while before you were, for a while, a few months, but... Not, actually, I think it might have been 94 through 96. Yeah. We were down there. 
and then you moved back to yeah Washington. we moved w when our first when our first child was born it was like oh let's get closer to back to the family sure. <laughs> so they could be yeah, around it was kind of a shame though because i loved oregon <laughs> back in the day it was back in the such day a neat place to live it was just so neat the downtown the waterfront all the little the little pop-up startup beer companies like you know like new minimums and Northwestern, and then even what's the big one? Uh, the Hefeweizen we used to always drink. Remember the name of it? Oh, anyway, they're huge now. They're yeah, national. It companies. was just when they started. Huge, in, I don't remember. <laughs> they started in Oregon. You know, it was just such a neat town. Were you in Portland, or I worked in Portland, downtown Portland. Actually, it was on the downtowns on the west side. I worked right on the other side of the river by Omsi. Okay. And on the east side, and we lived in Clackamas, in Oregon City. Yeah. It was just, it's so, now it's just, well, oh, just not somewhere you want to live. Oh. And I worked on the southeast first. side also. Okay. I didn't test it, let's see. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, looks good. So I've been there a handful of times, not in the recent years, but, and I noticed that too. And it definitely added a really fun element to the town, especially like food. And, exactly. Oh, man. That, I mean, honestly, that's one of the funnest parts about meeting different cultures is sharing the food. Exactly. We all got to eat. Yeah, I see what you mean. Like, you got to have it small. Or else that's gonna um, just infiltrate so much water. Yeah. Man, so you just leave the waddle, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just some more collagen there. <laughs> yeah, sure. It's true. <laughs> yeah. It's a shame Scott wasn't able to make it. We just got our um, panels to make our chicken tractor, so he's kind of working on that now. And well, there's, you know, when the weather's right, you got to work when you can. <laughs> so true. And there's so many projects in spring and summer to get done. Uh, yeah, because yeah, you can't get done without a winter. No. <laughs> Not outside work anyway. You could, you just won't like yourself. Yeah. Right? <laughs> it won't be fun. That's for sure. So you guys, I can't remember, were you guys doing meat chickens? Yep, yeah, yeah, we, uh, this year's kind of our beta trial year. Mm -hmm. um, long term, Scott wants to get it to where he's doing like a lot of direct consumer marketing of a variety of different meats. Okay. And so, you know, next year we'll probably experiment with some lambs and we're thinking about like, instead of leasing honey, like maybe having our own honey. Um, like apiaries, you know, and so you know, this year we're just trying to figure out like what could work and what not. Right. We try it this year. We are trying the double, uh, not double, um, the Cornish Game Hen mm -hmm. cross. So they're like the ones that you know they finish in six weeks. Mm -hmm. But man, we are finding they just eat so much feed that we're like, man, this might not be worth it. Like, yeah, they get done in six weeks, but like the cost of like to get them that fast, that quick by how much they eat mm -hmm. just might not be worth it. So I think next year we might get some heritage birds instead. You know, the last time we uh, raised the Cornus cross, I ended up um, not using the commercial feed. Actually, I did a third of it, mm -hmm. uh, the brewer, and then I, I can't remember exactly what I used. I think it, um, it was probably barley, because I love barley, and I fermented it, oh. and I did not let them feed every, eat everything they wanted, 
and it took a little bit longer and I let them and they were also on pasture yeah <clears throat> ours are going on pasture tomorrow okay so. and and but I think if you cut back the food and let them graze, go, <laughs> graze so they're a little bit hungry still that's a good idea um so and I think ours shoot let me think that was 2018 I think you know we did them in two different runs I think it was eight and 11 weeks that we ended up doing. Eight and 11, okay. I'll tell Scott that, that's a good idea. And, but it was a more flavorful bird. I also put some, some sunflower seeds. I love sunflower seeds and, and meat. I feel like flax probably would have a nice flavor. It doesn't. Oh, really? No, it can oh, get uh, fishy real quick. Oh, interesting. That's good to know. Um. <laughs> okay, I want to get one more quick dip on the front. Try to get the rest of that head. So you'll like, you're gonna roast the whole thing with like head and all. Yeah. So I where's like the? We'll just cut out, you know, cut out the little trotters, but that's it. Get and then the will thing. you gut her, gut them then too? Or? Yeah, we'll gut them right after this process right here. Okay. And then I think I'm gonna do a dry brine on this guy oh, nice. instead of a wet brine. Um, and so my dry brines, I always try to stay right about two percent salt. So mm. I'll just weigh them again after we get them. Oh, and, 2%. Okay, that's yeah. good to know. Right kind of the same thing I do with my ferments and everything. Mm. Stay right there about 2%. So when you're fermenting stuff, like, do you put any vinegar in there? Or, like, what do you do besides, like, seal it with, like, a pressure release valve? I don't even do that. I just use a crock. Oh, okay. Um, I just put salt in there. Just salt? Yep, 2% salt. And that's it. Because we got a deal right now with uh, the local grocery store in Ennis where they're giving us all their waste produce. Uh -huh. So like, you know, lettuce, cabbage, broccoli, you know, whatever. Like right. what, whatever is like, no, not presentable. And then it hit me and I was like, man, why don't we like start fermenting this beforehand? So then it's like basically sauerkraut for the pigs and the chickens. That'd be awesome for the chickens. Pigs, you may not like the meat as much. Oh, really? With, yeah. the, with the vegetables? Yeah, yeah. And it's kind of, and you, and there's a certain amount you want to keep for the meat, but I think that would be great for the chickens, especially. Cool. Um, <clears throat> I think if you had a star, uh, you know, going oh. already, you probably, because you don't want too much salt for pigs. Mm -hmm. I was talking more of humans. Oh, I see, I see, I see. So I think if you had a grain start going, um, mm. so like right now I'm soaking um, barley seeds. Oh, okay. So I soak them for a couple of days. I put a little bit of vinegar in the water, mm. the water, and then drain the water. There's, it's kind of fermenting and bubbling already. And then, so you've got a start going. So if you could soak, you know, add water to there. So if you don't have chlorine, yeah. then you would have there but you want to top it off you'd probably do it in a tote or or you know one of those barrels or something cool cool when you say you don't want the chlorine the vinegar minimizes the chlorine is that what you well mean? no the chlorine will will kill yeah. some of the ferments um i <coughs> the vinegar will kind of get rid of some of the bad bacteria mm. oh i see what you mean gotcha yeah you know, because sometimes you, it, when you're getting some of that stuff, you still want to cl clean clean it because there is some bad stuff on it that you don't want to deal with. Sure. Do you think oats would be another good, like, fermented grain? It, it is. Okay. It is an, a good one, too, and it's good for the pigs also. We we get a lot of oats for the horses. Oh, do so, you? And so in my mind, I'm like, well, like we already got a ton of oats for the horses. Why not? Yeah. All right. Wow. Yeah, I like I like barley, but oats is another good one. Okay, that's good. Wheat I've done, but I'm just not a big fan. It just the it's just hard to break the husk. I guess you'd call it on there. Of the oats. Uh, wheat. Oh, wheat. So yeah. That's true. Wow, how 
terrible would this be? Like you guys said, your first pig, the like searing the skin on. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that must have been like you said a nightmare. Yeah, it was tough trying to deal with that because just nothing released. And Did you just end up skinning it? And it was for Christmas too. Oh it was gosh. for a Christmas dinner. Oh no. So we we put a lot of pressure on ourselves. Yeah. Did you just end up having to skin it? Um, what did we do? We got the a propane torch and burn all the hair off. Yeah. Oh wow. I think we tried shaving it. Um, oh, we were out there for quite a while. The head is always the hardest. Oh, it is. Our hardest to get off. The hair is just a little different up here, and I don't know if it's because the way they live, the way they are always in the dirt or the food pushing around. I think it's because it's got so much different cracks and divots in there too. All right. Do we have any rake cows out here or not? I do, but they're dirty. We don't want to get them. All right, I'll go grab a few from out of the house. So now I'm just going to take that old half of them. And <laughs> shave them. Oh, okay. That's how you get the rest of the hair off and just give them a quick, quick little shave. Scrape down. Yeah, I was wondering. I, I was wondering if you were going to use a torch or something. This makes just as much sense. Yeah. Why would you do this instead of a torch? I don't, the smell. Oh. That, you still get a tiny, you'll get a tiny bit of that burnt hair smell. Mm. Wow. Well, this is cool. Thanks for the show. Yeah. <coughs> Have you all been able to find a good community around here yet? Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is a great community, yeah. Great neighborhood around Butte neighborhood. 